The scenario that we're running right now is focused on the air launched effects or ALE scenario. We're using four aircraft up in the air in order to do a Diller mission, detect, identify, locate, and report, where this team of ALE are going to fly out, search that area, and as soon as they find a threat, they're able to report that back. We can very rapidly take uh, new technologies, new algorithms, and move them through this pipeline so that we can demonstrate them faster than ever before. This entire process has four main stages. Our first stage is a faster than real-time environment where we can run our entire scenario in seconds. Once we move that into our vSIL environment, it brings in real hardware, it brings in real networking and radio communications. Once that is complete, we move out our hangar setup where we have the actual aircraft. We can integrate that same autonomy running on that same hardware, but this time with the actual air vehicles. And then once we're comfortable with that ground testing, we'll move out to the range in Pendleton, Oregon and be able to actually fly those aircraft with some of the environment still simulated within our VSIL. And it's a hybrid flight and virtual environment. The, the fast and real-time environment allows us to run literally thousands of combinations of a simulated mission in minutes. So we can change variables like the direction of the wind, the speed of the wind, the particular location of where these ALEs are being launched from, what direction they're being launched from. All these parameters can be tested ahead of time before we then move it on to the, to the VSOL validation. Arm the ALEs first and then launch. The decoy is the green cone you see, and so he is trying to elicit the threats to target him. And when that happens, the other three UAVs will be able to detect the targeting of that threat and locate it. And as we see now, now the decoy has found and has elicited the threat to target it and the other teams have been able to identify and locate it. So based upon our initial tests and they were so successful, we decided to make our final scenario even more challenging. And so we made our payload 50% worse. We added wind gusts to our simulation. We added latency spikes to our simulation. And we did all this in about 36 hours, which is pretty impressive. We were able to make the adjustments we needed to the scenario. Then we ran a, I think about 8,000 runs last night in order to vet this new scenario before we ran a few on the V-cell and then we ran it for a reel today. Right now both aircraft think they're flying. So UAV 1 and UAV 2, because they're going to be our, our real assets, we have the real autopilot running in, in these assets. And so when we're out at Pendleton, these aircraft will be flying uh, a holding pattern prior to us initiating the mission. The difference between the ground test setup and the flight test setup is, well, we're gonna go fly in Pendleton. Other than that, the same exact aircraft, the same connections, the same uh, integration will be identical between the, the ground test and the flight test. Hey, communications are gonna remain the same. I'll have communications with the tower. Uh, all the other communications will take place on one, two, three, three, five. We've got uh, Medusa one and two. Now Peter's Medusa three. And you guys are going to be November five through Mike. Okay, Pendleton Tower, Medusa four, in like 15 minutes of operation, 600 feet below the patch. Behind me is the VSO, the Virtual Simulation Integration Lab. It's our mobile integration and development platform that we can take with us to the different places that we do our testing. Bird one and bird two, plug in loaded. Bird one and two are in the loiter. Alright, no stop arm aliens. Alright, stand by. And launch, launch, launch. ALE is launched. 
All right, we are under autonomy control. If somebody told me there's real ones flying outside, I'd be like, okay. And if there's not real ones flying outside, I'd be like, okay. To me, the only minor difference when they're all live, there's got to be a little bit more of like, okay, we're approaching real life boundaries. Threat two has been located. Mission complete. Disable autonomy. Disconnecting ALEs. A successful run through this process and successful flight means that we've created a pipeline for new technology to come in and get up into flight very, very rapidly. So what we're aiming to do is allow customers and third parties to use that as part of their process as well to get their capabilities fielded as quickly as possible. I definitely think that we're going to go back and, given what we've learned, we'll improve the ability of the sim to model some of these real-world effects, such as the calm dropouts and the gustiness of the winds, and allow us to change those parameters so that we can more accurately reflect a range of conditions under which these vehicles can fly. 3004 report complete, reduce support. Yeah, this was an incredible test. The great thing about doing software is you get this quick feedback, but your software is not real, it's not physical, right? But flying them here, we actually get to see the results of what we did and see them act correctly in real life, and that was a big deal. But more importantly than that, we got some data that we can go back and analyze, try to improve both our simulation capabilities, also the software itself. I think we'll have a better solution when we're done.